the whole issue, you know, craft versus art and fine art and applied art and so on. I've had so many discussions over so many years about all that sort of thing, you know, and about marketing and, and all these topics that they just go round and around and around and I'm, I don't like to even bother with those things now. Uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, it's flattering to be called an artist, I suppose, but it's only a label. I think it was grade eight, uh, junior high school, we had shop classes, woodworking for part of the year in a metal shop. And I just took to the woodworking, I don't know why. I, I, you know, I went home, bought myself a table saw, put it in the basement, couldn't think of anything to make. <laughs> so that kind of went nor nowhere. And once you get into grade nine, at that time, this is the mid 60s, um, anybody with a pulse was sent off to university and that's where I was slotted and so I finished my economics degree without distinction just scraped on through and uh, at that point decided that there was no way I was going to be working in a bank or you know anything to do with economics which is what my degree was in uh, so I was just sitting around waiting for things to happen and I wound up more or less drifting into woodworking. Oh, inspiration, where does it come from? Why do the legs have to go on the four corners? Why can't the legs be set in? You know, do we really need four legs? Can we go with three or with five? And you go through such a, an interesting cycle you know, I do everything, so I'm out there designing the job for the client, then I'm going and buying materials. I come home, I do a shop drawing, if I haven't done it already, start cutting. And that's a very exciting time because it's all potential, you haven't made any mistakes yet. And so then you get into the job and you're really enjoying it, because I love the, the work. And you get to a point where, well, you've made a couple of little mistakes or you're starting to see the thing come together and it's not exactly what you envisioned. So there's kind of the frustration, apprehension there <laughs> and a small shop. So I have to complete the piece. I can't put it in the corner and start another one. So that provides me with the discipline that, okay, you started this, you finish it. Because you do owe it to the materials, you can't be burning your work all the time or you know trashing it or trying to rework it um, and then finally the piece is finished and you kind of you're relieved you might be exhilarated or disappointed or whatever but then the client comes and sees it and there's always a positive reaction it's so interesting to be as you say in the moment because you know, you're working and you can tell whether you're in the right space by how both how the work is unfolding and also your attitude towards it. And, you know, if, if I put a tool down and in a minute or two later I go to pick it up and I can't find it, then I realize, oh, I'm getting off track here. I'm going to just take a deep breath. I'm going to clean up a little bit. I'm going to reorient myself and go at it again. Or I'm going to quit for the day. You know, it depends because there is such a nice rhythm to things that, uh, you know, you plan certain parts of the job you can do when you're tired. Other parts of the job you've got to run with all your lights on.